Okay, my friends, here it is. The only video you need to watch to explain exactly what foods you need to be stocking up on now. So I, it's gonna be a little bit different than the normal videos that I do on this channel, but I originally made this video two years ago when the pandemic first hit, but people weren't really clued in to food shortages and stuff like that at that time. I was though, I knew it was coming, it was inevitable. And so now it's mainstream, we see it everywhere. And food prices are rising, fuel prices are rising, all kinds of instability, war, all these other things. Now more than ever, you need to watch this video and stock up on these foods. I explain exactly what you need to get and why. So depending on the type of response I get from this video, if you guys are feeling it, let me know in the comments. And the very next video will be a tutorial on exactly how to store these things in the Mylar bags with the oxygen absorbers for a 25 to 30 year shelf life, okay? This is the real deal, my friends. Create this now, it's gonna give you that cushion, that peace of mind, and it's going to give you that buffer against economic instability. So we're gonna stockpile these foods and then supplement, of course, with our garden stuff that we're growing, okay? They go hand in hand. So check it out, let me know what you think. All right, my friends, check it out. This is what you need to be stocking up on and you need to stack it to the rafters now, okay? By the end of this video, you're going to have a thorough understanding of exactly what you need to be stocking up on now and why. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, in, in a situation where things are gonna be lean, either total collapse or where things are just lean, shortages, food supplies are down, and it might be a long time before it comes back in, um, just to have that peace of mind and that cushion, all right, at the very least, the things that we need to have most are protein, fats, and carbs, all right? And we have to have those things in uh, long-term storage capabilities, or at least medium-term. So to do that, we need to have stuff that is dried, all right? I'm not a big advocate of canned stuff. It's okay, but there's a lot of preservatives usually go into it, and it's a lot of weight and a lot of bulk for not that much food supply. So I'm way more into dried things. They will last indefinitely, and they're more versatile. So, let's get into it. Foundation of everything is rice. Get rice, it's easy to digest. It is, um, it goes with so many things and it's loaded with high quality carbohydrates, okay? Um, most of the world eats rice for every meal and they're much health healthier than Americans are. So, next thing, you have gotta get in the beans, okay? Dried beans, if stored properly, and I'll show you how to store them, they will last indefinitely, all right? Five years, 10 years, 15 years, if you keep them away from humidity, from moisture, rodents, and heat and light, okay? Uh, the beans, they're gonna give you the fiber and the protein that you need. They're a complete source of protein. Contrary to popular belief, you do not need to eat animals. Okay, you can, of course, but you don't need to. Everything that the human body requires can be found in the animal or in the plant kingdom, okay? Think, all the biggest, strongest animals on earth are vegetarian. So, we've got beans, um, and all different kinds of beans, okay? And just be cooking with them. This is how I eat anyway, so this is very easy for me. I'm just showing you basically how I eat, but it just so happens to be the ultimate survival type lifestyle. Uh, yeah, red beans, black beans, yellow beans, purple beans, all of them. They're great, they're satisfying. Learn to cook with them, stews, all kinds of stuff. Next thing's gonna be lentils. Uh, well, green peas are kinda like lentils. And red lentils, mainly. This is like, I love them. I eat them all the time. Super high in protein, fiber. And fiber is vitally important, by the way. It's the food source for the 100 trillion microorganisms that live in your gut, right? Next along that line is going to be quinoa. You wanna be stocking up on quinoa. And this is a pretty good bag, actually, too. I got this one from Costco. It's very secure. And this will last a long time. And it's filled with not only carbohydrates, but fiber and protein and iron as well. So this is a great thing to be consuming. Because in a situation where things are lean and where uh, the, the society is maybe iffy or even totally collapsed or, or whatever, we got to be staying healthy. OK, 
okay, we can't just be eating a bunch of garbage, a bunch of spam and a bunch of other garbage. I mean, of course, if you were going to starve to death, you could, but that's not going to be conducive to vibrant health. All right. Especially not in the new world. So check it out because at the end of the video, I'm going to show you some things you don't want to be stockpiling up on. Uh, moving on. Pasta lasts uh, many years and it's wonderful for you. Very concentrated source of calories and energy. Uh, carbohydrates, fiber, protein, it's stuff's wonderful. So, and get the stuff that you use. Remember, uh, store what you use and use what you store. So I get organic everything where I can because that's what I like to consume. So pasta, uh, next thing, protein sources, a uh, little bit of animal protein. Yes, I do have some uh, canned chicken because it lasts indefinitely and it's cheap and there's a ton of protein, 40 grams per can. And there's four cans in this little thing that was like $7. All right, lasts a long time. And it goes with all kinds of things, but even better yet is sardines because sardines are a vegetarian fish, meaning you don't have to worry about the buildup of mercury and other toxic heavy metals and substances in the oceans because these only eat vegetarian stuff. So sardines are very good and they last 5, 10, 15 years, really indefinitely. But uh, next thing, so we had the proteins and carbs. Next thing we want to do is get the fats. The fats is vitally important. Fats have, uh, protein and carbs have four gram, uh, calories per gram. Fat has nine, more than double as concentrated of energy. That's why the body craves it. That's why we're hardwired to, to crave fat because it's a very concentrated source of energy. Coconut oil will last a very long time. See how hot it is in here? It's liquid because uh, I don't use air conditioning, of course. Yeah, coconut oil. And don't be concerned that it says saturated fat. This is a plant-based saturated fat. The body handles it very differently. This is incredibly good for us. So put it on everything. Next thing, along the same line, olive oil. Golden nectar of the gods. Olive oil is different though because we do not fry with olive oil. Olive oil we always put on last. It's raw. We want this in the raw state. You can even just drink it. So you can take a bath in it. It's so good. But seriously. You want to um, pour this pretty much on everything that you have uh, every day and um, consume it that way, okay? Remember, don't fry it. Next thing, ghee. Yeah, I like clarified butter. It's shelf stable and uh, it's very good for you, very high vibrational, right? Uh, it's a foundation of Ayurvedic medicine. Next thing, honey, you want to, uh, the sweetness in your life, you're going to miss that real bad when uh, things get lean. So honey is the one food that uh, never goes bad. Yeah, they found it in the Egyptian tombs and it's still edible. Yeah, uh, that's why they preserve things with honey. But anyways, raw, unfiltered, the only ingredient is honey. It has to be raw, has to be unfiltered, uh, unheated, and preferably local. Okay, uh, next thing, get you some soy sauce. Soy sauce has gotten a bad rap because of um, most because of the, the salt content, but uh, it's actually kind of a superfood. Uh, and th they've been eating it for thousands of years in the Orient. It's fermented and there's such a high sodium content that it will never go bad. So we need our food to be very flavorful and y you have to look forward to the eating of, of the sustenance, okay? And this will help and it stores forever. So next thing, oatmeal. Uh, in the wintertime, I eat oatmeal every single day. Uh, I don't when it's so hot because it's very filling, but this stuff is awesome. Proteins, carbs, fats, a um, little bit of fats, and dietary fiber, lots of fiber. This stuff is fantastic. You will feel good. Your, uh, it's got the good kind of fiber in it that the 100 trillion microorganisms in the gut like to eat. Next thing is going to be nut butter. Get you a bunch of different kinds of nut butter. Peanut butter is the best, or I mean peanut butter is the most common. But uh, it will last a long time, way longer than it says it will on the, the package. Um, this stuff, I've had it last for years and still been good. Very concentrated source of energy. Okay, nut butters. Uh, next thing is going to be salt, okay? And not the table salt, which is just stripped of all the minerals. It's pure sodium chloride. Sea salt is actually sodium chloride plus 81 more minerals. And all of those minerals help with the assimilation of the salt into the body. It's actually very, very good for the body. 
So watch my video I made on the Master Cleanse saltwater flush to learn everything you could want to know about salt. It's like 25 minutes long. I'm just talking about salt. Um, but you'll know everything then at that point or as to why you need to be eating like this. Uh, next thing. Oh, I want to show you a, a cool. So this is how you should be storing this stuff. Okay. Look, five gallon buckets. Food grade five gallon buckets uh, with a lid. Make sure that the lid has the uh, rubber seal, the gasket around the outside. And this thing, I mean, you have to pound it on with a mallet. Okay. So it's very, very strong. And it keeps out all the moisture, all the air, all the rodents, and all the light. All of those things are the things that degrade uh, the substance and take away from its shelf life. So, okay, my friends, one side note. Uh, this video that you're watching here, uh, I am describing the ideal way to store the food that you're currently using uh, in these buckets like this. And that will keep good for between zero and three years, you know, maybe more, uh, as you're using it, getting into it. But since the two years ago that I made this video that we're watching, uh, I have since learned about and implemented with fantastic results uh, a, a method for ultra long-term storage. And that's what I'll make in the next video if you want. So put it in the comments if that's what you want to see. Uh, and that's using the Mylar and the oxygen, oxygen absorbers. Uh, okay, so. And, and that will be good for 20 to 30 years. So way ultra long-term storage, like a nest egg. You just, you just have that and you just let it sit in the basement, just in case. You can see here, I have dried garbanzo beans. Yes, I just put them in the five gallon bucket and these are great. I will then rehydrate them as needed to make hummus. Actually, I will sprout them first, so I'll make sprouted hummus, which just like quadruple their uh, vitamin and mineral content. So, you want to get the five gallon buckets, all right, and you can stack them on top of each other. You label them garbanzo and the five gallon buckets is the way to go, okay? Nothing's getting in there. And I've had, I used to live in the mountains and stuff and I've had rodents destroy. It's just heart wrenching. So next thing. So the, this is the foundation. This is the, all the, the uh, proteins, fats, carbs, the, the calories. But, the, but we also need the phytochemicals, the small stuff that feeds the microorganisms in, in the gut and that has smaller things. So to do that, dehydrate kale and put it in the Vitamixer and make a powder out of it. That's actually, this is a, a ton of kale. You'd be shocked at how much kale it took to make this. Uh, like an, a, an area like five by 10 and it all condensed down to this. So just, you can add one teaspoon into your smoothies or into your meals, your shakes or your stews throughout the winter to get that phytochemicals of the greenness. Uh, also, I dehydrate um, chives. Yeah, midwinter to get, take a good potato, you know, uh, oh man, and put some of these chives on it. So good. These I grew outside, of course, and also I dehydrate tomatoes. Yeah, they last a long time. These are actually a year old and they're still awesome. Uh, and I've got more being made, but you can put them into your stews and rehydrate them. They're shelf stable. Okay, next thing is gonna be spices. Guys, it has to taste good. All this stuff has to taste good, and we have to have the nutrients, all right? So there's gonna be uh, oriental mustard, uh, cumin, yellow mustard, oregano. Um, this is some kind of chili pepper. Uh, yeah, caraway seed for the uh, um, sauerkraut that we've made. Hopefully you watched the video and making your own sauerkraut. Caraway seed and juniper berries. So some garlic powder, some yellow mustard seed, because I ferment my own mustard and make fermented mustard. Yeah, oregano, uh, bay leaves, um, rosemary, cumin, seeds, and dill, stuff like this, okay? Because we want, the goal with healthy nutritional living is the widest variety of plants into the body, okay? And uh, last but definitely not least, we want the life force. We have to have the life force within us. And so we need to always have fresh living food. And to do that, there is nothing better than the sprout. So get you a supply of um, alfalfa seeds and learn to sprout them. Also, mung beans. Mung beans, just the one from the bulk section at the co-op. Just get the mung beans and sprout them. 
just a couple of days indoors it takes very little equipment check out my video maybe i'll link to it here uh, the video i made on how to sprout very simple full of life force and vitamins and minerals okay so uh here you go guys this is the stuff that you need to be stocking up on now okay this is how you should be eating anyways in my opinion all right full of nutrients and good stuff and supplement all of this is for long-term storage but then you supplement with the things that you grow from the garden like the potatoes onions carrots beets uh, all the leafy greens swiss chard collard greens all that stuff uh, and squash winter squash lots of winter squash so you supplement with all that fresh living food with this stuff, the dried food. But the beans and the lentils and the, the sprouts, all that stuff becomes living food because you sprout them all first, okay? So hopefully this has given you a very good idea of what you need to be stocking up on now. Like I said, my friends, stack it to the rafters now while it's plentiful and cheap, do it. Now I'm gonna cut to a few scenes of some of the foods you do not wanna be stocking up on and why, okay? Okay, things to not stock up on. SpaghettiOs. Anything that you turn around and you see an ingredient list that is wraps clear around the entire package and you can barely pronounce all the chemicals that are in it, stay away from. All right. Oh, helper, mac and cheese helper. Turn around. Bam, monosodium glutamate. All right. Look, guys, you don't want to be eating anything with all these chemicals in it. Yes, they're shelf stable. Yes, they will, sur they will sustain you in a survival situation. But... Look at these, okay? With these chemicals, you're eating them. Monosodium glutamate and all the other preservatives and the benzoates and the disodium binisotates and blah, blah, blah. All these chemicals, they are horrible for the body. They're not food. And they lead to depression, okay? These chemicals, they lead to depressive thoughts. They lead to hopelessness. They lead to despair. They lead to mental and spiritual confusion, they calcify your pineal gland, they block your heart energy, okay? They do nothing positive for you. So, you need to be eating fresh, living foods. If you want to feel alive and vibrant and full of life force, then eat food that is fresh and full of life force. Okay, my friends, if you learned something from this video, which I know you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you would like to say thank you in a bit of a deeper and more impactful way, then there's a link in the description to make a small financial contribution to my PayPal account, which I would deeply appreciate. Just say, hey, Nate, thanks for making the videos. Here's five bucks. And a big thank you to the people that have already done that. Uh, th that was so cool because I just started this, this PayPal thing and some people have already donated. And it just feels really good as a content creator trying to spread this knowledge, making these videos, to see that someone is like, hey, here's some of my hard-earned money. Thank you. It, it just feels good. So thank you guys very much for everything.